I don't really know how to describe today's session, except that I felt really good, but really bad at the same time. Uh, my Achilles was feeling much better, and that was surprising, because I had a pretty tough day yesterday. I was sprinting with my athletics track and field training group, and we were sprinting, dragging weighted sleds behind us, so sprinting about 30 meters but the sled probably had a total weight of about I don't know 10 kilos maybe less eight and so that's that's tough and I hadn't sprinted properly you know at at these speeds for near enough a year and so when you do that it takes its toll but my Achilles seems to be getting better regardless of what I do which is the it's good but it's also frustrating because there's nothing really Nothing really seems to speed up the process. So, but on the plus side, it's getting better. Now, apart from that, I am stiff and tight everywhere else, especially my hips. Um, training's been slightly toned down with some of the extra sessions. Um, I've kept the skills and the uh, work with a football um, a bit lower, a bit less consistent, but also lower impact. So instead of going out and dribbling with my boots on on uh, grass which stresses the Achilles I'm just doing some more stationary st skills drills with a smaller ball um, at home or in the backyard so that kind of gave me a bit more of freshness I would say to attack today's gym session and I think my resilience is improving because, um, basically because I've stopped hammering myself so much with the training just the past few days, I'm, I've given myself an opportunity to recover, and now I can slowly but surely start to increase the training load again, but not too much, which was the mistake that I made a week ago. So, with the split squats today, a little bit heavier, uh, 35 kilos, pretty sure I did them for 30 last time. And just a little bit heavier, a little bit less volume, slowly trying to build up. It's not very impressive, but you've got to do this kind of work. You know, I think this is the kind of work that builds your base of strength. you got to get all these sessions in at the lower weight, and it prepares you better for when you have to jump up to hit higher weights later on especially in the split squat, which is an exercise that still is not that comfortable. When it's something like a double leg squat, a normal squat, you can up the weights because it's just an easier movement pattern. Uh, you don't have to be as patient. But with the split squat, especially considering my injury history, I've decided to be a bit more, a bit more conservative, building it up over time. And I've settled into what I think will be my schedule for the next probably month and a half and with the lower limb sessions which is what I've been doing exclusively at the moment I'm gonna stick you know eight eight reps for one session maybe six then five then four then three slowly slowly building it up um, the previous session where last week it was actually two training vlogs ago when I hit 120 for two on the split on the double leg squats that just showed me that yeah my central nervous system can still push when I need it to but I think my muscular system is just it's like I've got some gaps that need to be filled and I need to build up to it slowly so that's what I've decided to do so I'm going to slowly increase the weights, slowly decrease the volume per set uh, over the next few weeks, and then go back again to higher volume and lower, and lower weights, but slightly heavier than today's session. So, for example, I'm doing six reps on the split squats. In less than a month's time, when the program cycles back to six reps again, I'll do a little bit heavier, probably 40 kilos, and then it'll go from there. Now, I'm going to write all this up in a spreadsheet when I decide on how I'm going to split the sessions, 
and how many sessions I'm gonna I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna sign up this week at the public gym, and that'll allow me to do some accessory work on the machines, some isolation stuff, just to fill in those gaps. And hopefully, I'll be able to do the upper body sessions as well. Um, time permitting at this stage, I think it's just a matter of me getting organised. But eventually, I'd like to be doing two lower body sessions, two upper body sessions and maybe one accessory session a week. So the sessions themselves will actually be very small, very short, but they'll be frequent. So I'll see how it goes. Otherwise, I could cram it all into one session and do two full body sessions per week. That might be the case for some days, depending on how I schedule everything else. So I'm just considering that eventually I'll be playing football matches, And the accessory work at the public gym might actually have to be after the game, which I don't have an issue with. I think it might be the best way to do it because then I'll have a rest day afterwards. Or, I don't know, we'll see how it pans out. And, you know, if on some days, if the the only solution is for me to do two sessions in one day, then I will. So, I'll work it out. There's uh, still some, some things I have to sort out with the scheduling. But it's also because my other commitments are changing. So it's it's kind of hard to settle in onto something very, very consistent at the moment. But that will probably sort itself out around about November <clears throat> when football training starts with the team. So the other thing is uh, the, the single leg deadlifts. I know I hit 60 kilos for two the last time I did these. Now I just wanted to, like I said, go back, fill in some volume. And just build up a bit more of a base. And then hopefully, I will be better prepared to tackle 60 kilos again. And it will feel even better. Maybe I'll go even heavier. And I think this is something that people neglect. You know, you've got to to put the work in at the lower weight. Be comfortable. Learn the movement and grease the groove, as they say. And that will actually prepare you better to hit the heavier weights later on. You've You've got to build up that tolerance. Lifting... Weights heavy, living, lifting heavy weights once is not going to have the same effect as a slow measured build up where your body is conditioned and primed over months and months to eventually hitting that session. You may hit the same numbers, but your body will be much better prepared for it. So not only will you be at less at risk of injury, but your exercises will be performed with more you know, high quality movement because you've you've spent so much time learning those uh, exercises and greasing the groove in your in your brain so that you can execute it more efficiently. The other thing is, as you see me now setting up the bench for the Nordics, it's um, still a bit of a hassle, but I have spoken to someone about getting a custom Nordic board setup uh, built, which. Um, I know the guy, so he's just going to do it for me for wholesale prices. So luckily it won't be that expensive. Um, but I just think it's going to take, uh, at least a month or so. I've got to chase it up. Um, but hopefully that'll be, that'll be done soon and it'll be good to have a, a state of the art Nordic, uh, bench set up that I can do the Nordic curls on. But the thing was today that it was actually the reverse Nordics, which I think you're going to see first. The reverse Nordic gave me more of an issue today. And I was just, ge- it's maybe because I'm generally stiff, you know, hips, knees, and ankles, ankles especially. Um, that was actually the limiting factor today. Uh, the RDLs felt fine. My hips were a little bit stiff, to be honest. But the RDLs and the split squats, because they're higher volume, you tend to settle into a. Uh, a rhythm with the reps and you just you just bang them out but with the re- with the reverse nordics and the nordics today i definitely felt the effects of not being fully mobile and it's taught me that i have to stay on top of the mobility stuff i have to keep foam rolling i have to keep stretching because then otherwise the quality of the session in the gym diminishes and then you may not hit that end range of motion because you're stiff and because you're not mobile now you can see me just rolling out my back because, like I said, I'm feeling stiff everywhere. The thing is, if you're not fully mobile, you may not hit the required range of motion to get the adaptation from the exercises that you want. 
So not only will it diminish the quality of the movement in the session, but it will diminish the quality of the training stimulus that will actually give you results going forward. So that's something that I think many people overlook when it comes to staying mobile and the effects that it has on your training. So all that being said, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of work ahead of me, but I'm keen to do it. And I think that when we train properly, when you cover all the bases, when you're mobile and when you're putting the right work in over time consistently, you can build a body that is much more resilient than than people normally give the human body credit for. The human body is very resilient when it is prepared properly. But the problem is that a lot of people actually rush that process. A lot of people increase the training load, myself included, a lot of people increase the training load way too quickly, way too soon, and they don't build that base of work. And that's why they have problems. That's why maybe they don't see the results that they want. Maybe they get injured. Maybe they feel much more stiffness or pain or tightness or soreness uh, than they think that they should. So it, everything plays a part. Everything affects everything else. And there's also a lot of other factors that go into this. And this is something that's taken me, it's taken me a long time to learn. But I feel like at last I have a handle on why things happen the way they do. That doesn't mean I know everything. Uh, you're going to see the reverse Nordics now. Um, just very, very um, uncomfortable today. Honestly, wasn't performed very well. Um, but like I said, it's a, it's a lesson that you learn. So what I have learned over the years is that the more you spend, as in the more effort and the more time and the more the more work that you do when it comes to training, you have to invest the same amount into your recovery and your mobility because you can't just keep going in one direction. You can't have all the yin without the yang. You have to balance it out. And if you push the body too much in one direction, that is, you keep doing these resisted contractions, which is what weight training and resistance training is. You have to go the other way at some stage. You have to stretch. You have to open open up these muscle tissues which are being contracted against resistance. And that way that that way you maintain healthy muscle tissue. So I'm definitely not going to neglect that this time around. And I'm definitely going to invest more into my recovery and mobility. I've got some some other cool uh, pieces of recovery gear and equipment on the way, uh, which I will probably show in a video uh, from a company called Normatech, which most uh, people who have a background in elite sport will know of. Um, it's basically just these inflatable like leg stocking things that um, when they inflate, it gives you the same it gives you the same effect of basically being in an ice bath without the cold temperature. It constricts the blood vessels and forces the waste products back up towards the heart. And then when you take them off, you relax. It feels like you haven't even trained. It feels like you're ready to go again. And it's not the be all and end all. It's just another thing that could probably help one or two percent. And I think that's a lot. A lot of another thing that people forget is that it's not about just doing one ice bath. It's not about just having a stretch. It's everything all at the same time. When you add it together, that's what makes the difference. Stretching once is not going to make that much of an impact. Stretching every single night for half an hour to 45 minutes, add it up over time over a year. That's what's going to make the difference. That's what's going to lead to much higher quality uh, workout sessions. As you can see with the Nordics, um, you know the setups. It, it's okay. It's doable with the with the weight plates on the bench. It's just that the um, you know the, it's not ideal. The ideal setup would be having my shins parallel to the ground, but because you need a bench and you need to prop yourself up on something, that's not an option uh, at this stage where I'm kneeling on the ground. So it's definitely just making do with what I have at the moment. Not that I'm complaining. I'm very fortunate that my younger self 
spent all of his savings and money that he earned at work and through playing football on gym equipment, which is why, you know, the gym setup is the way it is. Um, when I was between the ages of 17 to 23, which is when um, I was earning money playing football semi-professionally, all the money went towards gym equipment. So, you know, thankful that, you know, there was, there's definitely worse things that I could have spent the money on. But anyway, uh, moving on, it's it was a pretty decent session today. And I think the biggest change, uh, even though objectively the weights I'm lifting are lighter and my strength is lower than what it is or what it has been. And if you watch the previous training vlog, you'll see that, you know, I've done much more impressive lifts than what you're seeing now. Um, the biggest difference is the experience and the knowledge and the learning from past mistakes that I'm taking into my training this time around, I think is going to make a massive difference. So not only do I plan on hitting those numbers again, but I plan on surpassing them and performing even better. So it's going to take a while. There's a lot of things, even, even at the weights that I'm hitting at the moment. For example, looking at the split squats, I'm still not fully comfortable in that bottom position and I was kind of rushing to bounce out of there. And with this exercise that you're seeing now, the Copenhagen for the groin, it's still not very comfortable. The thing is with that first set, I actually had my heel off of the bench and that was just putting way too much stress on the rotator, the rotators of the hip, the um, assisting in the movement. The thing is, the um, Copenhagen exercise as a whole on that bench, the way I've set it up, it's a great exercise for intensity and tension, and it's very difficult, but there's a lot of other things going on, and you don't get a full range of motion to expose your adductors to tense, to intense um, contractions at very open ranges. So I know my flexibility probably plays a role in this, but when you compare it to something like an adductor machine, where I know this is probably, the, I'm probably the only person on earth who's going to make the argument that the adductor machine has some advantages over the Copenhagen bridge. Um, but the adductor machine, you can open the range, you can, you can objectively alter the intensity. So you can get contractions at larger end ranges of motion than you might get with the Copenhagen. So I think you have to do both, but the machine fills in the gaps that you might miss. This is something that I'd never used to do. I never used to fill in the gaps and I never used to appreciate that some exercises, you know, I was here, here you can see me experimenting with the bottom leg, just wasn't feeling comfortable. You know, I think I need to settle in on a way to do the Copenhagens consistently. Um, but yeah, the machines and certain exercises that have a negative reputation, they can fill in the gaps of your conditioning and development where the big main popular exercises, they may miss those things. So when I sign up for the public gym, you're going to see me doing some of the machine exercises. And I think it's something that's going to help because, like I said, it just fills in the gaps of what I was missing before with my training. I finished off again with the ab wheel rollouts. Good exercise. Makes my abs very sore. But that's all I really have to say about today's session. Thanks, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.